This is a match from the 2023 Fort Wayne Regional Championships, one of the first official competitions in the Regulation C format. Nick Navarre has made Day 2 for the fourth time this season, now he's in Top 8, and he's about to do something that's never been seen before at this level of official competitive Pokémon. That's right, he clicked Stealth Rock. Nick wouldn't go on to win this game, or this set. Justin Tang's Chien Pao plus Dragapult team was too much for him, just like it was too much for everyone else at Fort Wayne that weekend, but Nick made history with this team, taking Stealth Rock to by far its best ever Pokémon video game championships result. If you're a singles player, this probably sounds crazy to you. Stealth Rock has been one of the most critical moves in Pokémon's most played singles formats ever since it was introduced in Generation 4. Smogon's overused tier, the most popular singles metagame, often revolves around whichever Pokémon are best at setting up rocks. These are Pokémon like Great Tusk, Landorus Therian, Ferrothorn, Tyranitar, and Excadrill, among many others over the years. Most of the same things that make rocks good in singles are there in doubles. Lots of strong Pokémon are weak to rock moves, lots of Pokémon want to run Focus Sashes or have abilities like Multiscale or Gale Wings that only function at full health. And lots of Pokémon are bulky enough to live hits from big-time offensive Pokémon, but not after rocks damage. So why haven't Stealth Rocks taken off in VGC? Stealth Rock is the kind of move that most kids skip past when playing through Pokémon for the first time, failing to see the power it packs. The passive damage it deals, 12.5% to foes neutral to rock on Switch in, doesn't sound like that much. But competitive singles Pokémon often puts players in the position where they must choose between eating a huge super effective attack or switching. Putting a hard cost on that switch is a huge deal. According to False Swipe Gaming, past analyses of singles play have suggested that Stealth Rock does an average of two full life bars worth of damage per game. Rocks are valuable enough that many singles teams are built around lead Pokémon designed to set it and do literally nothing else. That's how strong Stealth Rock could be. These players were fully confident in their ability to win with five Pokémon plus rocks against the opponent's six. Even as counter Stealth Rock mechanics like the ability Magic Bounce, the move Defog, and the item Heavy Duty Boots were introduced, rocks remained a standard. They kept Pokémon like Charizard and Talonflame in check from becoming high-tier staples, and Pokémon like Cinderace would have struggled mightily if forced to compete in a meta without boots. But the one thing that's missing in VGC is the incentive to switch. By far the biggest difference between singles and doubles Pokémon is the relative lack of defensive switching in doubles. Switching in front of one opponent might not be too scary, especially if you know the types it can cover with its attacking moves, but in front of two? It's rare to be able to get away without the Pokémon coming in getting hit by a super effective attack or two strong neutral attacks. As a result, instead of constant switches, defense in doubles tends to instead revolve around the move Protect. Protect nullifies damage to the slot for the whole turn, forcing a much more difficult decision for the attacking opponent. Is it worth even targeting this slot at all? The other thing that's missing is the opportunity to switch. First off, with only four Pokémon appearing in each battle instead of six, there are fewer opportunities to switch in, either naturally or as a result of a teammate fainting. This alone is enough to give Stealth Rock a niche in the unofficial but occasionally played 6v6 doubles format. Also, with much more damage coming down on an average turn, games are much shorter. Singles Pokémon games routinely last 50 turns, and it's not that uncommon to see a game cross the triple-digit barrier. 1,000 turns? We're not advocating this kind of behavior, but it's happened before. But you'll rarely see a game cross even the 20-turn threshold in VGC, unless it's a matchup of two extremely bulky Pokémon like the Unaware Dondozo Mirror Match. Taking a look at the Oceania International Championships, one of the biggest tournaments in the Regulation B meta, not a single game streamed in Top 8 went past 17 turns. And that was despite semi-finalist Yu Itata running a team built around a very bulky Dondozo. Even though there's two chances to switch for every turn in doubles for every one in singles, the opportunity cost is just too high. The switches in a doubles game will only be a fraction of those in a singles game. At OCIC, there was an average of 8.1 switches per game in Top 8, including 4 switch-ins after a Pokémon faints or 4 per side. That means, as a Stealth Rock user, you're likely to deal about half a life bar's worth of damage in a game, and that's assuming you always try to get rocks up as early as possible, leaving the Rock user a sitting duck on turn 1. The math is simply not mathing for Stealth Rock in doubles in the same way it is in singles. So, how did Nick succeed with it? Nick didn't win his Top 8 matchup, but we did get a chance to see his team in Top Gear on Day 1. He was matched up against Alberto Lara, one of the top players in North America this season, an innovator himself who used Klefki at every tournament this season until Worlds. Just listen to the shock from the casters when Nick actually does the unthinkable and clicks Stealth Rock in a high-level VGC match. Like that. Big strong hits, Ting Lu going for the <laughs> Stealth Rock here. Oh, wow. We are really kind of reforming the way that we have done VGC. Dom Dozo going for the Yawn as well onto that Iron Bundle. Unfortunately, we're not going to get our answers from this game. Stealth Rock turned out to be a complete non-factor in this set. 
Nick brought the Tinglu to game one, clicked his entry hazards, and ultimately got run over. His adjustment was to lean more on his fast special attackers Iron Bundle and Flutter Main, and he was able to use that strategy, along with a very well-timed critical hit, to win 2-1. to one. However, rocks were critical in many of his off-stream wins. Everything has changed. Um, it's just so different in so many ways, and we're, just, we're still just figuring out ways that it's uh, different. As Nick said in his on-stream interview after his win over Alberto, Regulation C changed just about everything we knew about how doubles worked. Reg C only added four Pokemon, but they were extremely significant, or at least three of them were. Sorry, Wo Qian. Chi and Pao and Chi Yu had abilities that lowered the respective defense and special defense of all other Pokemon on the field. These Pokemon were incredible attackers in their own right, and also had the ability to turn anything next to them into a nuke. Ting Lu, though, was the perfect tool to counter the hyper offense this new meta brought. Its Vessel of Ruin ability lowers the special attack of all other Pokémon on the field by 25%. While Wojien could lower physical attack, that could also be replicated through Intimidate. An ability that specifically countered special attack, though, was new. Tinglu's attack stat is great, but its best attribute was its ridiculous bulk. Few attackers in the format could even knock it out reliably in two hits, much less one. Terrestrialization allowed it to neutralize even those opponents as well. Many players initially took advantage of this bulk with the move Fisher, a notorious one-hit KO move that has a 30% chance to drag a foe into the depths and knock it out from full health. If you're not going to be taking out opponents in three hits, why not roll the dice, the logic went. For me personally, I don't like it, I don't respect it. Nick's approach, however, was different. Instead seeing how the new realities of Regulation C could turn VGC into something more like the singles meta, with longer games relying on defensive switching to keep Pokémon alive and keep the option of the defensive switch on the table. Much like the Fisher Ting Lu players, Nick's idea was to exploit Ting Lu's ability to sit on the field forever. But he had a different mechanism. Rocks. One big problem with Stealth Rocks in VGC is that clicking it usually means accepting a knockout from the hits that are coming in. With Ting Lu, that problem is solved. It has massive natural HP and defense stats, and between EV investment and its ability, it patches up its merely average special defense quite nicely. Terra Poison nullifies its natural special attacking predators, Iron Bundle and Flutter Main, giving them no reliable way to hit Ting Lu super effectively without running uncommon coverage moves like Psy Shock. But another problem remains though. Doubles players are already careful about switching, and they'll surely be even more hesitant when rocks go up. Nick solved this problem with a Pokémon that's been dominant in both doubles and singles since Scarlet and Violet's release, Dondozo. Even without Commander Tatsugiri's Omni Boost, Dondozo is still incredible in singles. Its bulk stands up to just about every major attacker in the format, and Stab Wave Crash hits like a truck even without significant attack investment. Dondozo also has one of the moves most likely to force a switch from the opponent no matter what kind of format you're playing, and that's Yawn. Yawn puts the targeted Pokémon into a drowsy state, which then forces it to fall asleep after the following turn. The obvious counterplay is to switch out the drowsy Pokémon, and that plays right into Nick's hands. If the opponent doesn't threaten a knockout on turn 1, Ting Lu and Dondozo can Stealth Rock and Yawn and start a whole chain reaction. The Yawn Pokémon switches out and forces the new Pokémon to take Rock's damage, Ting Lu can start spamming Ruination or Stomping Tantrum, and Dondozo can just keep yawning to keep the opponent on the back foot, slowly but surely taking damage every turn. In the back, Nick had fast attackers like Fluttermane and Iron Bundle. Perhaps you built your team to take one hit from these guys, Pokémon everybody knew they'd be facing in this format. But they wouldn't survive after rocks. The result was a team that many were unprepared for. Focus Sashes and Multiscales were suddenly rendered useless. Fire, Ice, and Flying types were suddenly taking massive damage for no reason, and Nick's Pokémon were just too bulky to take down. And it wasn't just Nick who succeeded with this build, by the way. Two of the players who assisted in the building of this team, Carson Comfer and Eric Payne, went 6-3 in Swiss to finish top 128 and earn championship points. Alright, so did Stealth Rock become a tried and true part of the Regulation C metagame? Nah, not exactly. While plenty of slow Ting Lu teams remain, Stealth Rock was usually eschewed in favor of another attacking move, allowing Ting Lu to wear an Assault Vest and bump his defensive stats even higher. But a few Stealth Rock Ting Lu's lingered all the way to the end of the Regulation C format. At NAIC, two players made Day 2 with it, Dewey Sei and Trista Medine. These teams had different wrinkles. Dewey's included Commander Tatsugiri and another Hazard Setter in Toxic Spikes Meowskarda. Trista's featured Whirlwind on Ting Lu, another way to force switches, and included Fissure but on Dondozo instead. Still, regardless of the build, the same idea remained. Take advantage of Regulation C's uniquely switch-happy meta, include other means to encourage the opponent to switch, exploit the rocks, and then sweep with offense in the back. The Stealth Rock Revolution was admittedly short-lived. Lived. The move wasn't seen at all at Worlds or the rest of Regulation D's top cuts. That perfect storm had passed, and the addition of so many powerful Pokémon meant Stealth Rock was once again too slow for doubles, just like it had always been. But this was always its destiny. Stealth Rock is a move designed for a different game.
It's a move that makes most doubles players wonder if their opponent accidentally queued into the wrong ladder. But that's part of what made Nick's call so brilliant. This move was useless in VGC for over a decade, but Nick didn't let that stop him from believing in it. Will we ever see Stealth Rock succeeding in VGC like this again? It seems unlikely. Conditions in Regulation C's metagame were unique, and Nick and his building group were the first to see it. If there's anything to learn from this team's success, it's not to take Stealth Rock and slap it onto the next team you build. Far from it. But just because a strategy hasn't been successful before doesn't mean it isn't worth considering. So, if you find yourself in a unique metagame, the right answer might just be a unique one too. So Amoongus could go for a good spore, but Stealth Rock, Nick going back to those roots here, getting those pointed stones to float once again. Yawn from the Dondozo into the Amoongus. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about Pokemon, you could click here or here or, I don't know, go boot up your Switch.